Please leave a message after the tone. You've got seven questions, dude. Your life is going down the tubes. What do you do when you need advice? Rick, it's good. Good night. What am I fighting for? So turn your advice. Pick up the phone and leave a message for the new crowd. After dark. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Nude Clan After Dark. I am your beloved host, Caleb Schweiss. <laughs> Caleb Craig. And Cameron. And today, guys, it looks like we have one question, so we'll have to do some improvising afterwards. Yeah, just one, huh? Unless it's like the deepest question that's ever been. But I would put my money on probably not. Uh, let's see what we got, though. Let's see what we have. Noon Clan, it's a for extreme. Um, this voicemail is going to sound like a gag. It's going to sound like it's a joke, but I'm actually being entirely serious. Uh, my my question this week is: I recently got a uh, a PlayStation VR headset, um, and I've been playing it a lot. And I've noticed when I don't have the thing on, like when I'm in real life, um, I've noticed a surprising uh, disconnect between my hands and my brain, like, it's hard to describe, but it feels like my hands aren't a part of my body anymore. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it doesn't help that I'm playing VR games where you have virtual hands. Um, so I don't know if that's contributing to it. I guess my question is, should I be worried? Because I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to stop playing the VR. I love this thing. So that's not an option. But I guess is this something, like, twice I know you played Monster of the Deep. Uh, I don't know if you have virtual hands in that game, but did you notice a similar feeling of, like, a disconnect between your hands and what your brain was feeling after playing the VR for a while? Just want to make sure I'm not, like, going nuts here. Uh, also, Schweiss, you don't have to wait until the end of the last note of the theme song to start talking. I don't know why you keep doing that. If you want me to short that up, fucking tell me. I'll send you a shorter <laughs> version. Anyway, have a good show. All right, so... You do have virtual hands in Monster of the Deep. I mostly use them to pretend like I was grabbing my penis whenever Cindy came into the room because Cindy would just randomly show up. And it was always a pain in the ass because, like, the, no one invited this bitch over, right? Like, she just fucking, like, comes over and I'm trying to go out and do my fishing mission and I have to wait for this, like, 10 minute animation where she's, like, bending over and cleaning my car off. And I'm like, you know. This is awesome and all, but I, I want to go fish to beat this stupid fucking game. Yeah. Like, and so basically what I would do is just like walk up behind her as she's like, you know, she's like showing off and I would just like, cause you can, you can press pull the trigger in and it'll like slowly close your hand like around a pole. Right. So I would just pretend that it was my dick in the game and I would just like have it down in my <laughs> waist. Just like fucking, just like gra just grabbing my junk while she's over there like walking around. So, I mean, I basically mm -hmm. use my virtual hands to do what I use my real hands with most mm -hmm. of the time. So, it's like, I don't really know if I felt the disconnect because, like, your hand, I just use my hands to jack off in real he life. I can't feel his dick anyway, I, so. Yeah, I've sandpapered the feeling out of it. Can't wait till um, virtual games, like, get the technology to uh, let you pull your virtual cock out. <laughs> oh, can you imagine Conan Exiles that way? Because you get the dick and then you always have a, a virtual lawsuit against you. Yeah. <laughs> a virtual lawsuit. You're virtually sued, yeah. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it really affected me like that um, for my VR experience. And I played that thing for, like, 30 hours over the course of, like, a couple weeks. So it was a lot. Um, I, I guess you could just like carry the balls, the little like PlayStation cock and ball thing is what I, what I called it. Uh, you could just carry those around with you everywhere you go and that'll, uh, that'll make up for it. This is virtual real life. Yeah. Just like every time, whenever you move your hands around to like say hi to somebody, you got the little fucking PlayStation ball, cock and ball in your hand. That might help make your hands feel real again. I'm sure there's, like, other virtual reality games that you can play that don't just have, like, the hands, the disconnected hands. 
uh, so you can play those and not feel as weird about it. Yeah. Did you guys notice anything when we did that VR experience place? No, but he's consistently playing a game. You know how when you we played when that you do, for like twenty minutes. You know when so. you, you how you do a task over and over again, or you play a game for a very long time. You start to see that game other places in your your life. Like right now, when I close my eyes, I see like the red uh, murder circle from Sekiro, like <laughs> the just, Shinobi execution. Shinobi execution, and I just feel like I just the the connection there is I just need to assassinate. Yeah, who do you who do you, who do you see that? Don't give oh, just on everything. Yeah, like you're you're we just gotta, about to you're gonna keep knives away from Cam Cam for a little while, otherwise it's <laughs> gonna start like killing people. You just, you just hear to, that uh, Shinobi execution sound coming from the kitchen. Just a, you're just about to finish. It's just, it's just me slicing a chicken in half. Yeah, you're just about to finish up on the the woman, and like the Shinobi execution shows up, and you just like plunge a finger in there. <laughs> But I guess, like, uh, gonna, even even though the graphics the and, mortal blade. and virtual reality and stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. like that <laughs> are not, uh, you know, too, like, realistic, um, it's really easy to trick your brain. And so when you see your hands as, like, you know, as separate from yourself consistently and you're consistently performing tasks over and over and over again, and I don't think it wouldn't be, I mean, especially if you're, basically playing it all day after work and stuff like that so the part of your life that you're having most fun and matters you're making strong connections about disembodied hands and um that kind of i guess kind of translates when you go reach out for something you expect to see your hand floating there without it being attached to your arm and when you pick an object you don't really expect to feel the actual object inside your hand anymore but yeah if you want some extra disconnect sit on your hands for a while until they go numb and then start one example that i can give is if you um spend a lot long time on a treadmill and then you're done you get off and then you start walking like the actual walking speed you're not expecting to see like your legs are moving and now you're moving forward there's a disconnect there um, that your brain got used to your legs moving and then you just not moving forward. Yeah. And so I feel like it's something somewhere you're just training your brain to feel and do things. Yeah, you're a also way. expecting a certain amount of resistance too when you get off that treadmill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt that before after like a, when I was in shape and I did like a long session. You know? Yeah. You're expecting your your brain is now not expecting the movement forward and so now you get off the treadmill and you move forward it seems like you're walking extra fast even though you're not because your brain's just not expecting the speed not expecting the movement forward yeah it's expecting that resistance that used to be there and it's no longer there so that's probably the closest approximation i can come up with on the bright side, if you attach like Doctor Octopus hands to the back of your, your, you know, to your back, then you could probably control them easier than most people. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I can, I, I can barely do the Spock thing on my fucking hands. Like, I don't even know if I could. You can't you know, like, do that. You can't separate the middle. Not with this hand, no. Yeah. With my left hand, I can't do it. Can you do a game, game. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Good. But I can't on my right hand lower my pinky without lowering my ring finger. But I can on my left hand. Man, I need some fucking lotion. Jesus Christ. Yeah, my my ring fingers both move when I try to like. Yeah, curve same. my pinky. But I can. I can That's do nothing. That. <laughs> <laughs> He's moving Control his the top first knuckle on my top knuckle on his pointer. Yeah, I can do it like on all my. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, I can only do the. I can. I have to bend both. There you go. See that? You got all of them. Oh, I could do that with the. Uh, I can't quite so do it on my nothing, right hand. But yeah, that's a that's a what is that like a triple joint or some shit? A double joint. Because you can, you just he can just control. He just has a, a better connection to control the you know. His digits, so. Hmm. But he has of, no member control, so. Yeah, a lot of good it did. It's a lot of fucking good it's done you. Just fucking cheap ass in your way out of all these games that require precision with those said digits. Yeah, I'm blind, man. You'll get some fucking glasses. I have glasses. Well, then fucking wear them. They don't help. I'm still they, blind. They don't help. 
Yeah, glasses don't give you vision. Twice. You're not completely. They, they, they clear up. You drove here. Poor vision. I am still blind in one eye. You drove the, here. The Clearly, glasses, you can see. Glasses are not going to fix that. They're not going to ma- magically make me see. Like it's kind of what they do, actually. No, they, they don't. But you're not they blind. Blind. Yes, you might be uh, well, legally I blind. I can't see nothing. You're right. I I see colors and shapes, and that's about <laughs> it. Well, that is most of. I what know you're a good doing. album based off of that. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go and shape. Mm. All right, so I guess that's it for what we have, grievances. You know what, A4? What? I also have a question for you. Why the fuck do you only give that uh, out-of-context podcast thing Schweiss's quotes? What the fuck, man? Schweiss told me it was you. Why, am, why, why is my stuff not getting put on there? Because Schweiss is a man, always out of context. Because he always says something, and he... Uh he means it exactly the way he's saying it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's not really being out of context, though. It's just saying things that could be taken any way. Yeah. yeah. But he's taking it that one way. I'm taking it the way that is that seems the horrible the way. The worst way? Yeah. But that's the way you're saying it. Exactly. But it's... There's no other way to take that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really submitting Schweiss's out of context stuff. It's just like... You're just giving them Schweiss quotes. It's just not out of context. It's just Schweiss. Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck, man. I forgot to bring your turban. Oh, did you actually get it? Yeah, I did. Oh, my God. I got it uh, Tuesday. Did you try it on? No, I haven't. It's still in the package. Wow. That's too bad. I, I wanted to, to grace your head first. So, all right. So, you want more out of context you want to be quoted? I right? yeah, so. I want my quotes on there. I've only I think I've only seen two of mine on there. You just got to have better one-liners, Craig. I have a lot. Well, then fucking And you fucking steal all my jokes and put them on Twitter. I have stolen a couple. And <laughs> you've only told me like twice ever that Those you've done the, it. And then like I've discovered that you've done it by like searching through your like Twitter. The, <laughs> How much like, more of my stuff is this shit stolen? Yeah. It's I, about like half of his tweets. Oh, come on. It's not half. <laughs> if like there was two. ever like a, uh, a comedy drama between the two of you, it'd be Craig the genius comedic and then Schweiss stealing all his jokes and yeah. getting famous for it. Yeah. So I stole one that it was someone, Craig got mad about the people getting upset that Kratos wasn't voiced by a black man. Oh, uh, yeah. That one I stole. And then the one I stole that yesterday. That was the other one that you told me that you stole. Yeah, those are, there have been the, other ones that you didn't tell These are the only two I've ever stole. stolen that I'll admit to. It's that one and then, uh, that God. To. Okay, so one of the listeners, uh, Dr. Roxo, sent me an image of an article from a fucking website or a, a Twitter thing, and I think they're also a website called uh, Queerty, and this is really difficult Queerty? to like. Yeah, so it's instead of like QWERTY, like you know, it's, it's for like gays. Yeah, it's for gays, but it's like question. I don't know. And the article was titled "What You Stand to Lose by Not Having Sex with People with HIV." And I sent it to the group chat, <laughs> the Geekdom MVPs yeah. group chat, which is really just me, Craig, and Jake. And yeah, well, everybody else is in there too, but nobody fucking says anything. And Craig, <laughs> and Craig, uh, Craig just says AIDS with a question mark, and I laugh at that for like five minutes at work. He's like, "That's technically what you stand to lose by not having sex with people." Uh, uh, with people with HIV, and I was like, "What the fuck kind of an article is this?" Like, Jesus Christ, what you stand to lose from not killing yourself? Well, life itself or death, I guess you lose the the ability to just die. I mean, yeah. So supposedly I, now, though, um, there's medications and stuff that um, reduce the risk of giving someone or you know getting HIV by a ton now. So it's not as risky as it was before, but but still, yeah. Yeah, but it's still AIDS. Um, I mean, it can be and it will be. Mm. So I read the article. Oh, you read the whole thing? Yeah. What did it say? Basically, the whole premise of it was that you're possibly giving up on your perfect match 
by not by not <laughs> okay. by seeing someone because a lot of people will just say they have AIDS and they do a dating app. Because you should probably make sure that's known. I I don't know. It's maybe after. I don't know. I I don't know when I would tell someone I had AIDS. Hopefully before I fucked them, but definitely afterwards, right? <laughs> Uh, the whole thing, though, is like they he he mentioned that he would see people, you know, like a, the idea was that these two dudes were the perfect match. And it was like one of them had AIDS and it was cool. But it was this like scenario where instead of that, these two perfect, perfectly matched people never did it because one of them wasn't cozy with the fact that the one guy had AIDS. So it was keep your options open. Even in I, the face of HIV. I mean, you could make that argument for literally anything. You could say that to straight people and be like, you know what? You could be missing out on your perfect match by not being gay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, then uh, that's a non-argument. I mean, you so, probably wrote a better article right there already. I did. Headline. Yeah. I, I was saying that like, and I tweeted this. This is where I stole Craig, Craig's idea. I said, if this isn't just a one word article that just says AIDS, I'm going to eat my shorts. Like... Did you did eat your you shorts? Eat? Yeah, I did did. You eat? I didn't eat my shorts, but I... <laughs> I'm sure they make, like, gummy shorts or whatever that you can go buy. And <laughs> yeah. Them. Yeah, we can actually do that. I can eat, like, a candy necklace, one of those sex shop candy necklaces that are, like, the underwear. Yeah. I don't know. And it's, like... <laughs> but, I mean, here's the question, though. It's that... that the, 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 I understand, you know, kind of both sides like yes it's harder to get aids now but still it's still a, a disease that'll remain with you the rest of your life and that you can potentially pass on to someone else it's like why peer pressure someone into doing something they're uncomfortable with in the beginning like it's just like let's just boil it down to that yeah. it's an article designed to peer pressure someone um into doing something they're not comfortable with and then, and the, and then also, how do you know they would be a perfect match? Just because on this app, it's, you know, they it said that they could be a perfect match. It's not like it's a fucking app. I mean, choosing to be with somebody who has like a huge disease is a big commitment, and you can't make that kind of thing lightly. Yeah. Also, I'd like to bring up the idea of a perfect match because I don't think that's really. A fair argument to make. Yeah, because I think is the, did the article say that they were a perfect match according to the app, or they were just you know generally a perfect match? Theoretically, they could have been perfect. Oh. And I don't think that person exists. And I don't think that's necessarily what you want in a relationship either. Because I do think what you want in a relationship are differences to some extent. you got to have like your core beliefs and your core life goals in alignment. But you shouldn't be the same person. Because that's not very fun. That's boring. That gets old. That leads you to, you know, not want to be part of the yeah, relationship anymore. There's not really anymore. any adventures or anything. There's no conflict either. And I think you need you need some sort of, like, headbutting. You need someone that's willing to put you in line when you're going too crazy, you know? And I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect match. I think there's probably a decent-sized amount of people that you might even know that you could get along with long enough to sustain a long-term relationship with... I don't think that it's fair to say that this person could have been your perfect match because I don't think that's true. I think there's undeniably there's someone out there in the world that you've never met and you never will meet that would be a better match than the person that you're with right now. And that doesn't matter because it's I mean, not about that. With 7 b billion people on the planet, it's a good chance that yeah. there's at least five The people odds of you being able to find good for you. The odds of but you what finding are the odds that of one them person being in this area. Not fucking area. high, exactly. That is very low. And that's the thing, is like, mm, you can't... Forever alone. Saying that, that's saying right. that it's, oh, my perfect match, I don't, I don't think if that's true. If you go true. to India or China, you'll have a much better chance. They have way more people. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's just a... It, it technically... I don't like it just from the standpoint of pressuring someone into doing something they're not comfortable with. Yeah. I just don't think a perfect match exists, and I also don't think that's what you're looking for. No, if you're holding out for a perfect match, you're never going to... No, you're not. I mean, there are those lucky few who find... I mean, that's kind of what dating is for, is to find yeah. out whether or not you're compatible. It's not necessarily to like, oh, you dated... The, the, you you went on one date, so now you got to choose whether or not you're good. Yeah. Do you, do you see what I'm saying, though? There's like probably a decent-sized amount of people that you could put up with for a long enough time to yeah. make something work. And I think it's the bonds that yeah. you create 
through those differences and through it's those the hardships. Friends we make on the way. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the true treasure. <laughs> it's the journey, not the destination, right? <laughs> and that's the part of the journey is having someone that you know. I don't know if that's always the case, though. It's not always the case, especially for Lord of the Rings. They they really had to get that ring destroyed. They did. <laughs> they did. But journey is the part of the story that's the best. Uh, it's funny because that there's that one, and then there's the Dark Tower and the destination. I mean, they both kind of are about the same thing, but one of them I fucking, I, I left with a very sour taste in my mouth, and one of them I did not. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and it, the Lord of the Rings is the one that I didn't leave disgusted by. Yeah, <laughs> it's I fucking figured. sweet. Uh, but I, I, I think there's a lot there's a lot more to that, and I think it's fair to say that there's probably a very large amount of people, like way more than you would think that you could put up with and could make a life for yourselves with and could learn to maybe even more more than s- truly love immediately learn to love over time which is almost to me it, it's a it can be a stronger bond than just like you're really really into each other you know physically and stuff like that but mm-hmm. like that doesn't necessarily last because there's a lot more to life than just fucking people like and having sex like that's pretty sweet but they're, you know, you got to stop at some point and like go to work and like actually build something together. And if you can't do that, then the other part doesn't matter. Right. And so I think there's a lot to be said about not worrying about finding the perfect match because there's going to be people that are that you could get along with better. And it could have been, you know, something more compatible than maybe who you're even married to. Right. Um, and I think that not thinking that is like statistically moronic because you, you can't tell me that you believe that you found the right person and you know, there's nothing and maybe you feel that way and that's fine but like statistically looking at it it's like the odds of that actually being true fucking minimal but it's great that it but feels the that odds way. of that of you finding the perfect relationship outside of yours is also equally uh, unlikely yeah yeah exactly so i mean it's and i i don't like that part of the article either because it implies that there is a perfect match and that that was lost or could potentially be lost by putting up these barriers. And I don't think there is a perfect match. Now, admittedly, the, there aren't as many fish, there aren't as many gay fish in the sea as there are straight fish. So it makes it harder for that particular community that had the article. Up. And then why does the relationship have to like start and end with you know, having sex with them? Because it's well, you know what, man. I just, like if they have H- I, if they have HIV and that's something you're worried about, why can't you just go, you know, talk to them, get to know them first? You know, Milo Yiannopoulos. You know, I listened to an interview with him, um, and he talked about how he's against marriage for uh, for gays, even though he's married to his partner, because he thinks that's the one thing that they shouldn't want. Is because to him, the lifestyle of being gay is just being able to have sex and like it's the partying and like the, it's basically the, what was it, like the 60s and 70s when like AIDS was just fucking, everyone thought AIDS was going to wipe out the race, the human race, because it was getting so out of control and stuff. Like Mm -hmm. that's his idea of what it is to be gay. Like it's, it comes part and parcel with that kind of a lifestyle where sex is the number one thing. I don't know. And of course, a lot of people hate that guy. Um, for, you know, understandable reasons and whatever. But I, I thought that was a really interesting take on it. And his idea was that, like, allowing, giving them marriage was taking away the one thing that made being gay worth it, is what he said, basically. <laughs> like, it was worth it because you could just that do just whatever you want sexually. Weird. But he's a very conflicted person when it comes <laughs> to that because he is married, too. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I bet his partner <laughs> is thrilled about his ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably has. Yeah, he probably comes home, and it's just like with me when Alex listens to an old podcast I mean, where I'm talking about wanting to be single for a while. Is there for right before who, I started dating, I mean, her. marriage should be <laughs> and is there for anyone who wants to have it. And if you want to live that kind of lifestyle, nothing stop just because the option of marriage is there. Does it take away the lifestyle you want? Yeah, you exactly. Don't have to get married, exactly. You can yeah. just do what you're doing. I think the underlying point was that that. That is kind of part of the lifestyle is that sex is the big, a big thing. And you think about it like as a dude, you know, if you want to get laid as much as you want, the best thing to do is to probably be gay because dudes always want to fuck. And if you fuck another dude, like it's always time. You know what I mean? So like it, it's perfect <laughs> if you just want to fuck all the time because <laughs> like, it, 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 the other person wants to fuck all the time too. It's like 
Yeah, I mean, I could see it. It's just that, you know, you got, obviously none of us are into dudes, but <laughs> as far as like... <laughs> I mean, clearly. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though, right? Like, the male sex drive is so is so ob- obscenely I, I, high. I'm not done laughing at that statement. It's <laughs> <Yeah. second. laughs> obvious. <laughs> clearly, we're not gay here, but... Uh, <laughs> but, I, I mean, it... it, it it makes sense, I guess. Um, yeah, man. Uh, God, every time Schweiss says something like that, I just get reminded of that one <laughs> meme yeah. I showed you guys. Yeah. Where, like, it's the VeggieTales dudes, like, looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God. Uh, so that, that article really kind of irked me. I mean, it wasn't a terribly written article. And, I mean, it does have a point. And if you believe in stuff like that, I suppose it could be, you know... It could be true, and it yeah. is true that there's yeah. a much smaller pool for that particular community. I so mean, I like, agree with that sensibility, and as far as you know, other persons' character traits or personalities. But when it comes to like a potentially life changing decision, you know, it should be peer pressured into that. Yeah, yeah, especially with that kind of a the kind of implement uh, the the implications of HIV itself. You know, like. It's crazy. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we might be suppressing it now, but I mean, it's still what happens I mean, if you, you if you get it, you still have it, and then yeah, you're. I don't know what can happen to you legally if you don't tell someone about it and you give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like what? What? On what the, are the positive side, though, you could make those HIV jokes. Yeah, you'd like, be free like to. Like you're, you're like you're not just positive. You're HIV positive. Yeah. You could say that That's, every single time. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And that probably would be worth it. You think you so? You could do the um, <laughs> the whole uh, Family Guy bit where you... Or not Family Guy bit. What was it? Cyanide and Happiness bit where they do the uh, barbershop the barber singing you have AIDS, thing. but then uh, yeah. they, can say, they can sing the barbershop quartet that I have AIDS and make it like a... I don't know. A funny little thing that they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I could. Uh, one other thing I, I wanted to bring up. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything? No. Nothing that's like bothered you that you've seen? How, Craig? Who are you? I mostly get mad at stuff in the beginning of the week, and then my anger dissipates as I no longer see it. <laughs> anger is for Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> it kind of is, man. I get fucking really angry. I'm like, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast. And then I'm like, I forget what I was angry about. Yeah. Uh, Mostly it's just drivers in Spanish Fork, because I fucking hate them. Yeah. God, they all do this thing where they stop, and then they turn. Like, you don't fucking do that (laughs) when when there's no fucking stop thing for you to stop at. Like, it's literally just, (laughs) it's just like, you're you're not even, like, changing lanes. It's, there's no stop sign. It's like, you fucking, like, okay, imagine a road where there's, it it, it, it has two lanes. One goes straight. One just kind of curves off, right? Instead of just, like going down the one that curves off they fucking like stop think about it and then they go See, I, I love it because you know there's no stopping to make two make turns for craig it's no there's no oncoming, slowing oncoming it's, oncoming no, no, traffic you can slow slowing, red light he's just gonna make that fine. left no, turn no, no. there's <laughs> not it's not about the lights there's no lights it's literally just like a two-lane thing there's one that curves, and then there's one that goes forward. If they're on the one that curves, they always just stop before they what? fucking, like, make the curving turn. I don't know what that's about. What's making me laugh is that Craig is so opposite of that. He doesn't even slow when it comes time to turn. Like, when I... you're riding with Craig, he fucking... If he's going 35, he's going 35 when he takes that turn. Like, and that's just how it's gonna be. And maybe it's because you know of what? the drivers down there have made him so jaded that he's like, I'm I... not even gonna slow down, because I want... We need to bring balance to this fucking town. Yeah, I need to bring balance to the fort, Jesus man. Christ. It is. Well, the snow will be on the ground soon. See how long this lasts. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to slow down for that. Yeah, yeah, you can't be fucking taking those turns like that with the fucking snow. Like, I mean, if, you, if you're if you really Although good at getting out. one of my out, favorite things to do is to take a roundabout at, like, 30, 35 miles an hour. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. But other than that. <laughs> uh, what about when it's snowing? No. 
<laughs> then yeah, you go no. even faster and do donuts. Then you can go just a little bit slower, and then you can just drift through the roundabout. Yeah, just hit that e-brake and just, like, fucking clutch your way through, just fucking slow. Yeah. I love doing the e-brake in the snow, dude. It's so ridiculous. It's I, I kind of like e-braking occasionally, too. Like, just while I'm driving, if I want to take a turn really fast. Oh, man, it is so fucking fun. You just fucking wrench that shit, and you're like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so cool. You feel like such a badass in your little Honda, like fucking screeching around that corner, e breaking the turn. Uh, yeah, it's funny because you're in a front uh, drive vehicle, front wheel drive vehicle. So you, all that really happens is your back is fishtailing. You're not drifting. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good to have those here, though. The the people that yeah. get really fucked in the winter, like Dylan with his rear wheel drive um, charger and stuff like that. Just depends on how good of a driver you are and if you're used to driving with a rear wheel drive vehicle in the snow, but it is easier to correct yourself with front wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? There was something else I was going to bring up. I can't remember what it was, though. <laughs> I had it. This, this, is, the, this is the thing that you were like waiting for. No, the thing I was waiting for was to tell you that you don't slow down at all when you turn. That's the thing I was getting antsy about. No, I, I really don't think that's what it was. Well. <sighs> okay, so there was the anger from the article. There was the question for after dark. What else? <laughs> what else is there to to rage on? Hmm. I don't know, man. I think that's it. I don't know if I have it. I I lost it. We'll have to find it again. Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting too old, like Craig, and just anger isn't for the weekends. <laughs> Anger's for the week. No, I get I get mad throughout the week about different things. So I get for I forget what I was originally mad about. <laughs> So it just compounds. Yeah, it compounds against like one thing, and then yeah. it's like. That's why I, I feel like yeah, I feel like rage definitely builds based on your situation. Like when I was playing Death Stranding yesterday, God, and I had almost no sleep. I was like so filled with anger. I like uh-huh. put it down the controller, and I was like just shaking, and I was like, what the "Fuck, Dude, man!" I was so fucking tired last night when I streamed it for like three hours. I was like chugging fucking like those monster energy coffees. Yeah, man, Monster's got an increase in business from us lately. Cause yeah, of, I know. know. Well, I, I, I fucking love those things, and I loved them before the fucking Death Stranding, but like, I was like, oh, well, now nah, I'm contributing because of Death Stranding. Yeah, you need to, you need to crank them out like he does, though. Just like yeah, fucking, dude, he fucking like chugs those things. It's fucking disgusting, man. How is he still alive? I don't know. He fucking like goes full hard with it, too, dude. He like fucking like leans back, kicks up his leg, and just fucking chugs the whole damn thing. Well, yeah, he's got to, like, move his intestines so that it can uh, go yeah, directly. Fucking, he wants it to go directly to his fucking bladder. Yeah. he just Maybe he just wants to take a shit so he can throw it at the enemies in the game. He can use <laughs> yeah. it as a weapon. I don't think that uh, your monster energy becomes shit. Well, it helps you. It helps some, a lot of people, like, suddenly need a shit. Like caffeine. What is there, like a, a minor diuretic. diuretic? Yeah, caffeine's a diuretic. Um... Like with uh, Joe, whenever Joe, like five minutes after he drinks coffee, it's got to go. <laughs> For me, it's like an hour or so later, but it's oh, it's pretty much every time. Like your body's like, oh, by the way, there's all this stuff in here. The the you biggest difference I uh, feel uh, that I have happened to me is just my, depending on the strength of coffee, then my urine will smell like that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I I still I'm so obsessed. Like I I just, can't, just fucking do it. All right, I can't just fucking leave do it. the breakfast piss one day. Well, and then just like just remember it forever. I have to find. I have to. First of all, I have to make sure someone else is in there. So I have to wait for someone that I know urinates more than they shit, and then I have to like walk in and stand right next to him. But see, I don't think it's enough with the big buy bacon and the Seattle's best. I have to find something else, like some bread. We gotta find like a bread that permeates the piss too, and like just have like this full like luxurious smelling breakfast just coming from the stall next to you. Like I, I, it's such an amazing idea. 
<laughs> I've already done it. Like there was one time I was peeing and I was like, man, it smells, uh, it smells like I'm brewing some coffee over here. Like the person next to me didn't say it, a word because you're not supposed to talk while you're in the bathroom. But. Right. And the, you might um, overestimate how much everyone next to you can actually smell it. That's true. So yeah. it doesn't like, I'm pretty sure unless you're peeing over the stall, you're not, <laughs> not going to smell your breakfast. Yeah. Try and make it into their toilet. Well, yeah. you're in the, when you're in the other stall. Just, like, hold it in, just squeeze the tip closed, and, like, force some uh-huh. into the shaft, and then, like, let go, and just... It's like a, yeah, it's like a hose <laughs> where you gotta, you gotta, like, bend it first until the pressure builds <laughs> yeah. up, and then you gotta fucking release it. And then it'll really launch it over that wall. Uh, we have a couple urinals, There's though. There's a f- few things that you can say that just really get choice going, and you want stuff to your dick is one of them. Yeah, hey, bending it like a hose and using it to projectile launch your piss is certainly one. <laughs> You're welcome. That one will get me going every time. Yeah, I bet it will. Uh, no, I, I need to find like a bready substance that that transcends the urine as well, so I can have the Seattle's best. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the there's big like a bacon. sourdough or something that'll. Yeah, and so it just smells like it's like man, this smells like I paid good money for this breakfast. <laughs> like there should be some mimosa like sitting next to this delicious plate of bacon. Sourdough you know fucking what, You know what, Shwai? It's fucking, fucking make a Reddit page, all right? And then see if see other if people can... are having, like, the same problems as you. Yeah, like, try uh, to find... With, with the with the piss that smells like breakfast, and then just, like, see what other breakfast foods is yeah. able to uh, contaminate the urine as the, well. The last time but, I... I mean, the easiest thing to do is list of items that can um, make your urine smell. Top of the list is probably going to be asparagus. Oh, or yeah. Like that. Asparagus, yeah, for sure. I The other thing I want to do is find out how to make my cum taste like bacon. Like, But honestly, the problem is is I like bacon the most, so like, I don't really know if I want that necessarily. <laughs> But like there's it's, the backtracking. But it's not bacon. Bacon doesn't make it taste like bacon. I know that because I. Well, I don't know that. But like I, I had. There was a phase <laughs> where the I was backtracking. Yet again. <laughs> yeah. There was a. There was a. <laughs> you know, Joe always did I say know that. that. I, mean, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe always used to say Jesus. that if he was going to try, any I don't cup, know it, it was going to be his own. So I mean, I imagine Schweiss is probably the same way. Yeah, yeah. Schweiss is just over here eating like he almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, November seventeenth. Listen, listen, listen to the, his laugh. You know he's guilty. Yeah, I've got like a little food log, and I, there's I, gonna I, be like a fucking like Elmer's glue bottle in his room, and we're just gonna like know what's uh, in it. It's got a date printed uh, on no, it. No, no more, no more thing. I just, thank you. I, I put a fresh um, squeeze. No I put a more. Fr- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fresh squeeze twice. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got like a, a food log, and I like just no taste more. it a month later, and like nope. Nope, this doesn't make it taste like bacon. It's gone bad. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fermented. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think that would be really fun. I haven't been this into like bodily, you know, release like <clears throat> bodily fluids since since I thought about trying to make my cum taste like bacon. That that, that I failed though, but I have made a pretty damn good breakfast. Breakfast smell just from the bacon in the cup. That I failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make my cum taste like bacon, but I certainly could make you it know, smell I, like someone was making breakfast just, in the bathroom. Just eat a lot of Best Buy bacon or Big Buy bacon and see if uh, that that does anything. Nah, see that sounds just, like it's influencing something in your. Well, uh, see the problem with the Big Buy is that you know I imagine so the piss already comes out like a. Well, it's like it's like a bottle of Elmer's glue, right? But it's got like a little bit of clog in it. So when you squeeze it, it's just like a a little squiggly swirl of glue that flies out. That's how your piss becomes when you eat the big buy because it's so thick with fat and stuff. It just sprays out like a fucking can of silly string, you know. And so I imagine that the cum would should start take to a do lighter that. to it next time. Yeah, and see what... Oh, it'll let like go up inside me, though. That's a problem. <laughs> I thought you'd be into that. Well, until I explode. <laughs> At, uh, the final release. Yeah, the ultimate release. Um, one of these days, though, we'll, I'll, I'll have to find a good sourdough. Well, I mean, if uh, anybody can make pissing more metal, that, that'd be the only way to do it. More metal? Yeah. 
like rock. <sighs> mm. Have to set your piss on fire through bacon grease. Oh, okay, okay. Talking about that. How, yeah. how did you not understand that? All right. Well, well I was, was, still, was I was to make that connection. I was thinking well. about. I'm like metal, like uh, iron, or I mean. When you start playing with metal, talking about fucking like piss literally being on fire, and then and going then I was up inside twice, aluminum mixed with uh, iron oxide or something like that, and you're like some fucking thermite pee going on. And so, like, what is, where's he going with this? <laughs> I love the smell of piss in the morning. Yeah, uh, I, 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 we got to find a brand. I'll, I'll look on the, I'll look on Reddit, maybe 4chan. <laughs> It's like, hey, does anyone know how to make uh, I'm their... I'm sure somebody else is having the same problem as you. Yeah, does anyone know how to make their piss smell like bread? <laughs> Why does my piss smell like the Grand Slam from Denny's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a side of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Cheap-ass fucking Folgers they brew in there all day. <laughs> Yeah, it's never happened with another coffee in my life, though. Like, it always smells, you know, a little bit of coffee, you know, after you pee. But, like, this was like, dude, it was like I it just matters. brewed a fresh pot. It, it matters how strong the coffee is, how, like, if how strong it is and how many cups you have. And then you can get a pretty decent coffee smell going yeah. just off of that. But the, the Don't s- eat or drink anything other than coffee. And then see what happens. The Seattle's best, though. It's so thick. Like, it's just so ground that it, like... The coffee fat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the old coffee fat. It's like silly string. Yeah, exactly. But it's so finely ground that, like, I don't even think the filter stops it. It just fucking... It just all comes into the cup. Like, so it just doesn't care. you think you're out coffee grounds. I kind of do. I think, like, I'm brewing it inside my body. Like, I'm actually doing what the fucking coffee machine couldn't because, like, it's just too thick. And like when you look at it, it blots out the sun. I mean, it's so fucking thick, and it's not—it's not very good either, honestly. But like, it's just the finest powder that you could ever imagine, and it's just all you in think your, your fucking kidney's cup. Gonna form a kidney stone of like coffee grounds. Probably, it's just gonna—I'm gonna piss it out, and it's gonna be a coffee bean. It's gonna like. be uh, no, It's gonna be like a. <laughs> It's like a little stone of obsidian, just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that dragon glass? <laughs> <laughs> the maesters call it obsidian. Yeah, well, no, unless you I kill could. the night king with like a fucking chunk of that from your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, what what if they did some stuff like that? What if they made like is there gun? There's gunpowder in Game of Thrones, right? I would imagine so. Like capable explosions of and it. stuff. Well, they, we know there's yeah. dragons, you know, but they have other explosive stuff, right? Because they have cannons, or they don't. They just have okay. Because depending on if they had gunpowder or some sort of substance like gunpowder, the maesters probably have something. You know, even fucking uh, be, dragon, whatever that the fucking green fire stuff is. They could have made fucking obsidian grenades that would have fucking destroyed the Night King's army. Yeah. 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 Well, honestly, though, I've been thinking about it, and the whole idea of the Night King, he's not really in the books at all. Like, there's... So it, far. There's the Night King from, like, thousands of years ago, the legend, right? Um, but there's no leader of this army, and that's kind of the point. And the show not only gave us him, but they gave him, like, a face and, like, somewhat of a backstory. And I think that's kind of a failing of the show, now that I'm actually thinking about it. And I bitched well, about this yesterday, and I was like, that's kind of the whole idea, is that it doesn't have a pass. And Caleb and Joe were talking about the Joker movie, and honestly, the cool thing about the Joker is that he only came into existence because of Batman. It's like the idea... That's not necessarily true, but okay. <laughs> no, but he, it kind of is, and it's kind of the psychology of the Joker, at least as far as he's concerned. Because, you know, he wants Batman to continue existing in a way, even though he's trying to kill him because he knows he's only... The, it's like a, it's a balance, you know? The, it's like the balance between the two that this allow them not, both to it's exist. It's not the fucking the Jedi. It's not the fucking Force. There's it no, kind of is, though. With in it, a way, the, it is. It, it's a little simpler than that, I you guess. You could look at it as a twisted love story of the Joker being in love with Batman. Kind of, yeah. And, like, he needs Batman to be the Joker, almost. And it's almost like a... He's the Joker because he wants to make Batman better. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird thing. And it's almost, like, synonymous with, like, uh, 
I don't know, like the story. Or maybe and, Batman is slowly tearing Gotham apart while the Joker is trying to put it back together. There is a comic about that. And it's fucking annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Through Batman's vigilante um, processes, he just makes crime more violent. And the Joker's really trying to root out the corruption where it sits. You should raid Batman White Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the perfect one for, for you. No, I'm just kidding. It's, seriously, though, it's I didn't like. like it. Yeah. Part well, of it was okay. You also don't like the comic movies because the people don't look like they do in the comics. That's which is not fucking necessarily retarded. true. That's what you complain about Flash in the Justice League movie for. But it's it's annoying though because he's not. He, okay, so he, he's he's the Flash is a very muscular Aryan type dude. All right, you don't fucking get like a scrawny. Dude, uh, with black uh, hair to play <laughs> the Flash. You just don't do that. Look, I okay. So you were you were wanting someone to take you out of context. You just provided them something. What? Yeah. Wait, is the guy who plays the Flash a Jew? <laughs> is that what you're getting at? That's another <laughs> one right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, all right, but still, like, the, you just don't do that, like. Well, it's if you have a character who's specifically described a, in a certain way, you don't get someone who's completely the opposite to play that character. Right, but he acted him very well. I don't think is not really. I, I, I like. Are we that talking about the CW out of Flash for the Flash? Are we talking about the CW? him too? Okay, because this is terrible. It's just it, it terrible. Is. It is. Like, you know, I'm not even talking about the actors. This is terrible. Fucking both the actor for the Justice League movie and for the TV show. They don't match the Flash. I mean, I I, I don't know. I I feel like there's there are situations where it works. What about what about Smallville's Flash? Oh yeah, he was bad too. That made me mad. They were all kids then. Not well. That that wasn't even like. Was the Flash never a child? He's just too fast. <sighs> he he was in small. Uh, the Flash was in Smallville, and he was a kid. Yeah, that's and then what I'm he was about. like fourteen. But that was like a weird thing. I don't know what they were doing with that. And they wouldn't let Batman in there because they were doing the fucking Batman Begins movie. See, and and DC has this bullshit thing where they're like, well, if a character's going to be in a movie, we can't have them be on TV at the same time for no reason, even though they have a multiverse. What the fuck is the point of a multiverse if you're going to be like, well, you know what? They can't exist at the same time. Well, the DC, the Batman, the, that trilogy is different, though. It's not really... Yeah, it is different, but that's the point. It's because it's good. That's why it's, it's different. It's a, no, that's... Not why, but okay. They have a trilogy, but it's not like a multiverse. Not with those. It's not the same as it is now, where ever since It could be Marvel, counted in the multiverse. Yeah, I guess. I mean, because he, you know, he lives at the end, I guess. But also, fuck you. Christian Bale is great as Batman. No, if he's anything, not. If anything, he makes a pretty good Bruce Wayne. And no, the Batman he's a fucking shitty Bruce Wayne. Dude, I, dude, you're so fucking wrong about that. Those movies dude, are Christian, great. No, dude. I do not think Christian Bale is that great of an actor. All right? I have seen... There was... I can't remember what the fucking name of that movie is. There's a movie where he's, like, in China, and he's, like, fighting a war, and he keeps switching accents, like, every 20 minutes... And it's annoying as fuck. Craig. He goes from being like a really British guy to being like a southern dude like every 20 minutes. And I cannot stand it. He is not that great of an actor. All right. There are other people who could have easily been a better Batman. I don't think so. John Hamm being like the number one on my list. There's no way John Hamm is not a better actor than Christian Bale. That is ridiculous. John Hamm is great. And there's no does, way that he's not a better there's actor. There's no way that... I was still po- mulling that over. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> so he's definitely a better actor. <laughs> like, I can't... <laughs> you, you super agree with him, all right? <laughs> yeah, thank you for agreeing with me. That's I, very I, kind of you. I can't... I can't agree with the idea that John Hamm is better at acting than Dude, Christian Dude, how Bale. many fucking movies have you seen with Christian Bale other than, like, the Dark Knight movies? I've seen the Dark Knight movies. I've seen, uh... Um, I said other than the Dark Knight I movies. Know. The, and the, he starts with that. Yeah. Uh, the one where he plays fucking... 
Um, Dick Cheney. It's amazing in that. I don't think I've seen that one. He's amazing in Equilibrium. Um, the Machinist. The Machinist. American Psycho. American Psycho. I mean, that one was weird. It's yeah, it's a weird movie, I but I don't know how I feel about that movie. Look, man, there's you're fucking crazy, Craig. You're fucking crazy, and it might not. <laughs> he might not fit. Batman, but you know what? Ben Affleck fits Batman, and he sucks Not too. Really, I think he fits Bruce Wayne pretty well. Eh, it's like the way he looks. He's no. a little too lazy, though. He's not. He needs to be more built. He's not. And that's the thing that Christian Bale doesn't. It doesn't work for Christian Bale either. He was in. He was John in the Ham as well. definitely has. And the, the, the movie you're probably talking about was it Empire of the Sun? No, I think it was like Flowers of War or something like that. Yeah. It was fucking awful. Flowers of War. Yeah, dude, it was like a three-hour movie where he couldn't fucking decide on an accent. I don't I don't think I've seen Ooh, that. Ooh, there was 310 to Yuma. I remember that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying Christian Bale's, like, fucking uh, on the level of, like, what's the, what's the dude? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the dude? The guy Le- in the Big Lebowski? No, is that, not, is that what not talking about? the dude. Uh the guy from uh from like There Will Be Blood. Oh, there was also the big show. Oh, that um oh, fuck, what's that guy's name? Daniel Day-Lewis. He's no yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis, but I mean fucking really John Ham. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Physically John Hamm would work because John Hamm is a much broader, larger person. Now he's also much better looking. Yeah, and yeah, he I fits the part in my mind more than Christian Bale. Christian Bale got really built for those movies, but he's still too skinny. He's too thin to make it work. And Ben yeah. Affleck is too fucking lazy. And he even admitted that when he was doing interviews, like he hates working out. Yeah, like, he just hates it. So like he's a larger person. But he's lazy, so like John Hamm, I, I think would work because he's he looks kind of like Batman. I don't hate Affleck for his role as Batman. I just think he was extremely poorly written because you know Zack Snyder can't make movies. But <laughs> yeah, well, uh, everybody knows that. But, but uh, I, I think other people could have been Batman. I, I he just he just more. got real moody the whole that, during that whole filming, and then God, afterwards. he was such a child in fucking Justice League too. It's fucking awful. Like yeah. that one line where uh, Superman's like, "Oh, I, you must have been uh, really hard for you to bring me back because I know how much you hate me." And then he's he, then Ben Affleck's like, oh, I, don't, "I don't hate you." I was like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me right now? That's an actual line that they fucking shoved in there? God, it's fucking awful. Yeah, well, it's funny how many people wanted the wanted Snyder's version of the movie, and it's like, yeah, I don't think Dude, you really do. Okay, so the, the thing that pisses me off about that is they, they've been doing that for, like, a couple of years now. So whenever Justice League came out, I'm like, fuck you. Like, there's not really a Snyder cut that doesn't actually exist. He didn't, he was not there for part of the filming because, like, he had a family thing happen. Somebody in his family died, I believe. And so he couldn't be there for filming. So they got, like, Joss Whedon to come in and finish the fucking movie, which means that there legitimately cannot be a Snyder cut. Right. All right. Like there can't be one. And then, like a couple days ago, there's like a bunch of like celebrities that uh, that fucking like tweeted out to be like, "Oh, release the Snyder cut," and then nothing. Release happened. the Snyder. Nobody fucking gave a shit because like it happened one. T- it, it trended for like a day with big celebrities being like, "Yeah, do it," and then nothing happened. Well, a cut doesn't necessarily mean that he directed the whole thing. It's just his. Yeah. Well, his version of it, which there's not. His producing. There, there, there's not really like anything that he really could do. Like he wasn't there for half the filming. Well, yeah, like, he wasn't why, there. Why should there be a Snyder cut if he was only there for like half the movie? Well, because he can still edit together what he would yeah, have kept still footage though. wise. Because they film a ton of different stuff, and then they decide what they want to keep, and that's what the cut is. It's not. It's not that you have to be the one directing it to have your own cut. Usually, you have the director's cut because they are the one mostly involved. But technically, you could film a movie. I mean, when there's, like, two fucking directors on the film, like, Mm -hmm. and WB has the final say. 
Yeah. Well, you could film a movie, and I could make my cut of that. that would be I mean, you could. There yeah, are at least like four, There are cut. four cuts of like fucking. Uh, oh God, like Blade Runner. It? Blade Runner. Yeah, I have that one edition that has like all of them. It's fucking sweet. Yeah. What's your favorite cut? <sighs> the director's cut, I believe. It's the one that doesn't have the voiceover. Because the voiceover like adds nothing, and it's fucking awful. Yeah. The voiceover one just kind of reminds me of... They had the voiceover one as like the theatrical cut, and I think one other one has it too. The, the voiceover... F- I think the final cut and the director's cut both don't have it. It reminds me of... Uh... What I don't like about Hereditary, where like the movie just basically holds your hand and tells you exactly what happens at the very end, and it's like, <sighs> see, the cool thing about The Exorcist is that it didn't do that, even though it's basically the same movie. Like it didn't tell you exactly what happened; it just showed you some freaky shit, and you knew that the thing was still alive. Yeah, even though the guy killed himself. Like, that's freaky. But having it like having your hand held and like everything told to you at the end—that's not freaky. It's just like. Annoying and pandering. But, yeah, I think that's it. It's yeah. a, lot, a lot more than I thought. But let's get out of here. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And uh, 385 204 3921. Give us your questions and we'll answer them on Nude Clan After Dark. See you guys next time. <laughs>